Hi, I'm Sam Blasco with Minimax USA here in Austin, Texas, and today we're going to talk about bandsaws. Uh, Minimax makes a bandsaw for everyone, from the E16 through the MM16, the MM20, the MM24, and on up. There's a bandsaw for every woodworker. Uh, what I'm going to do today is demonstrate the MM16 uh, and show some of the features that really help separate the Minimax bandsaws from every other bandsaw in the world. Minimax USA makes the most industrial and heaviest bandsaws in the market today. Um, what I'm going to do is go through and show you component to component what separates the bandsaw and exactly what those differences are and the build quality of the machine. We're going to start at the top of the bandsaw, the flywheel. It's a full cast iron flywheel, solid, half inch thick, electronically balanced at the factory. It's the heaviest wheel out there for a 16 inch bandsaw. This particular wheel weighs 26 pounds. What that means in terms of cut quality is you've got more momentum flying through the cut once you get up to speed, which is going to create an easier cut, a faster cut, and a smoother cut. One of the nicer features about the Minimax bandsaws is the quick change tire system. What you've got is a rubber tire that is tongue and grooved, machined into the tire. When the time comes to replace this seven, eight years down the road, you just cut this off, heat up a new one, snap it in place, let it cool down, and you're good to go. You don't have to pull the wheel, send it out to get it scraped and then vulcanized and rebalanced and sent back. You're done in 20 seconds rather than two weeks. One of the features of the Minimax machines that uh, really uh, is unique is their guide post assembly. It is unlike any other guide post assembly out there. It's got the biggest post number one, and instead of a rack and pinion system, it uses a chain and sprocket system similar to what you'd find on a forklift. In terms of capacities, each Minimax bandsaw, um, most of the MM machines, the diameter of the wheel matches the resaw height. Um, the guide post assembly itself is adjustable. If you like it looser or tighter, it's got an adjustment in there. And it is an independent unit outside of the bandsaw. In other words, it's not just a bunch of components that are bolted to the machine and you hope the rack matches up with the pinion gear and et cetera, et cetera. What you've got is a unit that works outside of the bandsaw. I happen to have one right here, and that's what sits inside the bandsaw. Here's the uh, detailed explanation of what we've got in that guide post assembly. Um, here's the bar, the thickest bar, like I said, in terms of uh, the size of the bar. You've got a cast iron quill assembly with two points of contact that are machined to the bar so it's the tightest fit, so that even when it's loose, there really isn't much play in, in the guide post assembly. Um, like I said, you've got two keyways on this machine, and one sits a chain where the sprocket matches up, and in other, floats a gib in between the two quill points so that when you lock it out you're pushing on the gib not the guide post so you never score or dent the guide post. Uh, chain and sprocket how it works as you can see straight up and down and then the adjustable tension spring there if you like a looser or tighter guide post in terms of the way how easy it moves up and down. Another nice feature to this whole guide post assembly is that it is externally adjustable for plum. Um, you've got your points right here and your locks. 
When you're talking modern bandsaws and the way the resaw height is growing, the spine is the base of the bandsaw and it becomes super critical. Minimax is the only company in the world that uses a triple box beam. The fence of the Minimax bandsaws are all cast iron. Um, they're machined square and true. Uh, one of the features I really like about them uh, compared to a lot of other bandsaws, you want it off the machine, it happens just that quick. You don't have to pull it off a rail or unload a blade, unbolt anything. And another nice feature is the drift adjustment. What you've got is one bolt and a drift pin. So that basically, when you need to set your drift, you just loosen the bolt, move it, and tighten it back down. Very simple. I want to talk briefly about the guide system. Uh, Minimax uses the European guide system. It's a tried and true system. It uses a roller disc with uh, bearings. And uh, it's a simple lock ring. There's no tools required. It's what I really like about the system. A lot of surface area to cover the blades. You just dial them in, get them where you want them, and then lock them out. Very simple. This is the table for the MM16 right here. It's got the thickest cast iron in the industry. Uh, you can see up underneath the webbing is very, very solid and well engineered. You've got a central locating pin for the two halves of the table, a 90 degree adjustment bolt, and with a quick release for reverse tilt, you've also got an excellent plate system for quick tilting of the table. I want to talk about uh, the lower cabinet assembly here, some of the features that uh, you're finding down here. Uh, first off, we've got an independent micro switch. Um, this is uh, different than any other bandsaw manufacturer. Most use one micro switch at the top of the bandsaw so that the doors have to be welded together. So if you open any door, both doors end up opening. Here you can open the doors independently. You've got a nice dust chamber here. It creates a Venturi effect. You seal the chamber with a zero clearance insert. Four inch dust port, so your four inch hose works beautifully. You've got six inches of adjustability on the guide posts here. So what you can do is that as you tilt the table, the guides can be adjusted optimally at the throat plate uh, as opposed to fixed down low at all times like most other bandsaw manufacturers. Then you've got the foot brake here. And then what separates this foot brake from all the others is it's a soft touch. I can stop this machine with my finger and no other pressure, you won't be able to do that. And we're going to demonstrate that a little later on in the uh, demonstration. I'd like to talk to you now about getting into some cutting on the MM16 and demonstrating what this machine's capable of. Most people think of a bandsaw like this, they think of resaw almost exclusively. And, and yes, this thing can resaw like nobody's business, but it can also do everything you can do that we grew up on on those little bandsaws that were always in our father's shops and then maybe our shops in spades and what I want to do in the next section is demonstrate a series of cuts uh, everything from resawing down to tiny little scroll work uh, one of the first things you do uh, when you get a, a piece of lumber uh, let's say you're going to prep this board for turning it into either something for the lathe or you want to turn it into lumber for some other part of the project. Typically what you'll do is something like this has been chainsawed into flats. It's very rough. It's very angled. There's nothing even about it. Now the bandsaw can pretty much take over and take this to the next level, the next step. And what we're going to do is put a flat face on this. It's relatively referenced off the one flat we put on with the, with the uh, chainsaw. And we're going to turn the log and actually thickness it so that when we turn this into, say, a bowl blank, which is what we're going to do with it, uh, it's going to sit on the lathe relatively evenly and not be a very unbalanced load for the lathe. So basically, what I'm going to show you right now is I'm going to do that first cut. And it's a very tall resaw uh, on the log. Uh, this is typically what most of us would get our hands on uh, in rough lumber coming into the shop. 
in order to uh, prep it for the next stages of our furniture projects. Uh, this particular piece is an eight quarter piece of uh, liptus, which is a harvested wood, very, very hard, very dense. It'd be typically like cutting uh, maple or bubinga even uh, in terms of its, its difficultness to cut, but it does machine quite beautifully when you're using a good tool like this. So what we're gonna do is this is in its rough state. Uh, it's about an eight to 10 inch board, again, typical of what we'd be getting our hands on. Uh, what I want to do is create some reference edges. So the first thing we're going to do is just rip off one little edge here to create a nice flat piece that will then put it up on the fence and then resaw our first base. One of the advantages of a, a great resaw bandsaw is the ability to make your own veneers, um, which can stretch expensive lumber very, very far. Now there are many schools of thought on how to cut your veneer, which side of the blade to take it off of. Um, what I've discovered, and many other woodworkers, is that if you set your fence once to the dimension that you want, and then you just use the bandsaw like a meat slicer and you keep cutting veneer after veneer after veneer. Obviously there's going to be a little bit of technique involved that helps you get uh, more consistent results uh, you know when your bandsaw is set up. Uh, if you're more in a professional shop you may make an accessory or an auxiliary fence that's strictly for veneering uh, in which case you can either clamp it or bolt it. Uh, in my personal bandsaw what I've done is I've drilled several holes on this cast iron uh, fence and made a nice resource fence just for veneering and uh, the nice thing about this particular fence because it is cast iron and solid is it makes a great platform for accessory and auxiliary fences like a log sled dovetail maker a veneer fence etc um, so what we're going to do is basically uh, demonstrate, there's a couple things I want to do in this demonstration. I want to show you why I like to come off the fence and never move my fence uh, by cutting two veneers in a row and then I want to also demonstrate that on a bandsaw like this the guides are important but they're not that important. It's technique and the strength of the bandsaw. We're going to do another third veneer cut with the guides completely off of the blade. We're going to take them completely out of the equation and see if we can cut an equal veneer without any guides. So there what you saw in quick succession was three veneers and if you look closely you can see they're all quite even and uh, usually when you make a flitch of veneers you want to keep them in the order that they came off so when the time comes to use them uh, your, your book matches are going to work out. Um, as best as possible. So we've just done three quick cuts. That was all with the standard guide assembly. Now what we're going to attempt to do is I'm going to do the remaining veneers uh, again without ever going back to a face joiner or anything um, with the guides taken out of the situation, just the blade and the bandsaw.
Um, this is the, the piece of wood that we uh, put a reference edge on and then a reference face, similar to what you do uh, to using a joiner, uh, etc. if you're prepping your stock. In this case, I used a bandsaw. On smaller pieces, a bandsaw can be every bit as effective as a joiner um, and even a planer on this when we dimension this, and that's what you're going to see. What I've planned for this chunk of wood is it's going to be four leg blanks. And like I said, we started with eight quarter stock. I'm looking for inch and a half leg blanks. So, and I'm going to do it all on the bandsaw. And what this is going to demonstrate is, number one, obviously that a bandsaw is very versatile, but number two, when it comes to, you know, like I said, we think about a bandsaw as a resaw machine, but now I'm going to use it as a ripping machine and a dimensioning machine. And I don't need to go from this to my planer in the next step because the cut quality is so good that the bandsaw can pretty much do all your work for you and then it's just a matter of cleanup because what we're going to be doing is some curved legs later. Um, so what I want to do here is just demonstrate the ripping and how this can be a lot more effective, faster, safer than a table saw in terms of ripping and also a lot more um, economical in terms of waste because you're going to get a much thinner curve and you have no issues of kickback to worry about when it comes to safety and with a good quality carbide blade like this you're going to get cuts equal to a table saw if not better because you're never going to gouge it doesn't matter if the wood clamps or spreads after the cut because there is nothing afterwards for it to bind on like a table saw so in many ways a bandsaw is a superior ripping machine to a table saw but it has to be a good bandsaw we're just setting up the guides here initially. I just want to show you how easy it is to um, dial these babies in. No tools required. I've set it on the post about the depth where I want it, which is slightly behind the gullets. I dial it in until I see the blade deflect just a hair, and I back her off, make sure that she spins freely without too much resistance on the blade. I don't use a dollar bill or any of that stuff. Just bring them in. Again, no tools required. This time I let it sandwich the blade completely so it's stuck between the guides and then I back it off until I hear them both spin nice and easy. That sets my side guides, very sweet. And for the thrust bearing, on the bigger blades there's so much beam strength in here that there is no point in riding the thrust bearing. So I will bring the thrust bearing up, touch the back of the blade, come over here and look at my side guides and I will push back on the blade until I see the gullets pretty much right at the radius point or the outside edge of the guides lock my thrust bearing in that position and we're good to go. The thrust bearing here is strictly for at this level of blade uh, just to keep me from pushing this thing too far off the machine. It really won't even be used in a, in a rip cut. So there you just saw me make four quick rips to, to start getting these leg blanks. And uh, the advantages, as you can see from this, is there's no burning, no gouging. Um, it's a beautiful cut on both sides. Uh, really, at this point, it's, it's ready for the sander. I don't even necessarily need to, uh, to go to a planer or a joiner or anything like that, especially for a leg blank that's going to be curved. Um, but um, what we're going to do now is square the blank. So I've done the initial rips and I gotten a four nice blanks out of there so far. If that had been a table saw, I probably would have only gotten three because the kerf is that much bigger. Um, what we're gonna do now is, again, like I said, square the blank. We're gonna take that last rough, rough sawn edge off and then I'm gonna keep the dimension setting the same and just flip it again and that's gonna give me a perfectly square piece of wood because I know that the fence is square and the blade is square.
What I want to show you here is I want to put a little bit of a bevel on this bowl blank, uh, just to add a little bit less work on the lathe, but also to demonstrate how easy it is to tilt the table and how quickly you can get to what you want. Uh, here's your lock lever. We're just going to release that. And then I'll put about, let's say, oh, maybe, maybe a 12 degree bevel, something like that. I just tilt my table somewhere in that range. And you can get a lot more precise if you needed to. Uh, in this case, I'm just sort of estimating for the bowl. But that's how quickly and fast you can tilt the table and lock it back out. There she is. Nice beveled bowl, ready for the lathe. Not a lot of work on the lathe. Now we went into uh, the guide system briefly uh, when we introduced the bandsaw. I want to go into a little bit more detail uh, on it now. Well, really, all I want to say is there are many different guide systems out there. This is the standard Euro guide setup. This is an example of our cool block setup. And then you've got something here like the stabilizer by Carter. Um, this is a universal mounting post. Uh, most uh, guide manufacturers out there make their guides to fit on this particular post. So really, if you like anybody else's guides or you decide you need a particular guide for a particular operation, it is very easy to put them on. And what I'm going to do right now is just swap these out to the cool block setup for our next demonstration. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to change these out here. Um, all you need on this particular machine is a uh, just an Allen wrench on the back here. That loosens up the post. And just slide the post back enough so that you can get the guide assembly off. Just slip that right off the post. And then put whichever guide system you're choosing at the time right back on that universal post and reposition that particular guide. Very simple. Like I said, we're going to do the cool blocks now, so I'm going to go ahead and load those. And I'll bring this forward enough to get it into the guide guard area and go ahead and lock her down. Just that simple and quick. Okay, what we're going to do next is I'm going to do uh, a leg with a curve. Uh, typically it could be a cabriole leg, a Queen Anne leg. In this instance I'm working on a particular design of my own, so it's not a traditional cab leg, but the process is going to be the same. A uh, couple schools of thought, you can, you can either cut all one side and then tape it all back together, draw your lines again, cut the other side. Uh, I tend not to do that. I'm going to back out of a cut, but I'll show you safely how to do that. And uh, we've got a quarter inch blade installed now, and uh, you saw me put the, uh, the cool blocks on, which is what we're using now. Uh, the cool blocks quarter inch blade is at that point where you can still use the Euro guides, uh, but anything smaller than a quarter inch blade, you'd need to go to an alternative guide set. Uh, so we thought we'd just demo this with the cool blocks on just so you could see it. With the cool blocks, um, what you can do is you don't have to worry about dollar bill or anything because it's a phenolic material. You just bring the guides right up to the blade and let, a, let the blade ride right on it. So we're, we're pretty much good to go and uh, next step is we're going to show you cutting these legs.
What you saw is I just stuck my little wedge back there. So I don't do a lot of binding coming out of the back of the cut. the off-cut piece when I'm pulling out. Not that it matters all that much. Because you're going to clean this all up later anyway. Now we're going to go to the other side on two full cuts. And then clean up the first side. It's just going to clean up the other side. And rather than retrace my cut all the way, I'll evacuate most of the waste. And just finish it up. Uh, what we're going to do next uh, is strictly to show the versatility of this bandsaw and, and just how small you can go, let's say. What I've done is I've installed an eighth inch blade. Uh, I've also installed the Carter Stabilizer Guide System just to show you it's a really terrific guide system for a blade of this type. Um, you only use one on the upper guides. There's no lower guides at all because you want the blade to be able to twist. I've randomly selected a picture out of a calendar that we had and I've uh, adhered it to this block of uh, mahogany here. And we're just going to cut this simple panther out. And uh, it might make a, an interesting scroll project or a base for some intarsia later on.
for our project now. What I want to tell you about here is, uh, when we, earlier on in the discussion we talked about the foot brake and how easy it was with the soft touch and everything and the massive drum and everything that's in there that makes this stop within less than a revolution. What we're going to demonstrate is me stopping it just sitting here with my finger pressure just to give you a, an idea of how excellent this brake really is. It's got a micro switch on it that kills the electricity as soon as you touch it as well as break the blade. Well, there you have it. Uh, we've just uh, demonstrated uh, everything that we think the MM16 is great at. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope uh, you learned what separates this bandsaw from all the others. And more importantly, though, uh, appreciate what a great bandsaw can mean for your shop. Uh, now it's just time for us to leave, so I'll demonstrate the mobility kit on our way out, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.